In this lecture, we will talk about user identification using Captive Portal. User identification using Captive Portal can be used for authenticating traffic from IP addresses that doesn't have a user ID attached. It can also be used to authenticate certain areas of the network. For example, you can implement Captive Portal authentication for sensitive areas on your network like HR servers and such. This way you can guarantee that the actual user that's connecting is the user that should be connecting to those locations. You need to go under device user identification and this is where the captive portal is. Before we get into the captive portal configuration we need to create an authentication profile to specify which users can authenticate to this captive portal. We're going to call this Captive Portal Authentication. And we're going to authenticate against the LDAP server. You can authenticate against local database, Radius, LDAP, TACAX, Kerberos. Those are different authentication methods. We're going to choose LDAP. We're going to choose the LDAP server that we uh, used. Under Advanced, you can restrict who can connect to this Captive Portal. And that goes back to the example I was mentioning earlier. You can use the captive portal to restrict access to certain areas on the network. In our case, we're going to go ahead and use uh, all, but you can restrict it to a certain AD group and then click OK. Then we're going to go back to the user identification, captive portal, and then we're going to enable captive portal. We're going to choose to specify redirect and you can choose transparent or redirect in our case we're going to use redirect the difference between transparent and redirect is transparent the firewall would masquerade as that destination host the user is trying to access which basically causes the issues because it will not be able to relay that that certificate that's on the destination host. So if somebody's trying to access www.yahoo.com, traffic will be transparently intercepted and the firewall will actually respond as if it is www.yahoo.com, which triggers an issue with users getting certificate untrusted. So transparent mode can be used, but you should only use this mode in virtual wire or layer two mode. Uh, we're gonna use redirect. In our firewall, we're running on layer 3 mode, so redirect will work just fine. And we're going to put the redirect host as the IP address of the inside interface. And then we're going to specify the authentication profile, captive portal authentication. That uses the authentication profile that we specified earlier. And then click OK. Now, in order for the firewall to intercept the traffic and send the user the captive portal, it needs to have the response pages set up in the profile, the management profile. So we need to go to network and then create a management profile for the trust interface. We're gonna specify ping, response pages and user ID. Then click okay. And then we're gonna go to the interface and associate that management profile to the interface. And then finally, we're going to go to policy and then set up a captive portal policy. In our case, we want to use this as a identification of last resort. And we're going to choose from source. So if anybody coming from the trust to the untrust, their source IP address is not associated with a user ID, they're going to get sent to captive portal. Uh, we're going to redirect server uh, HTTP and HTTPS. And then under action, we're going to specify the web form, the browser challenge, the firewall would challenge the device with a browser challenge. And this usually works with machines that are a member of the domain. If this machine is not a member of the domain, that's not going to work. And then click OK and then commit. And now we're going to go to the machine that does not have 
user identified and we're gonna go open a web browser try to go to cnn.com and we're prompted with the captive portal we're gonna put the user ID IT user one password and now we are connected using the captive portal let's look at the firewall show user IP to user mapping all and we see here IT user one and the IP address is coming from to make sure that uh, this doesn't impact my existing users that are member of the domain I'm gonna launch the Windows 8 machine and since this user is part of the domain they should not get the captive portal and there you have it we see that the AD user was not prompted and the reason why it was not prompted is this IP address that the user is coming from is associated with a user ID however that machine that's not a member of domain was not associated with the user ID so it got prompted with the username and password